Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, October 13th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes All Out, the Bear Podcast of Interman Length, episode number 758. And it's that time again. It's almost the end of the year for another month two and a half months but we still had a couple of state fairs so gary where are we going today we're going to the midwest we're going to the land of pitchens and casseroles but we no 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 not casseroles (laughs) Hot dishes. Hot dishes. <laughs> I knew what I was about to say, and I was like, I'm going to get it wrong. All right. So, but we're going to go to Iowa and Minnesota today. So for mm. those of you that um, haven't been around before, uh, we've talked about the state fairs in previous years. Um, we have two other episodes before this, this year, part one and part two. Um, so this is going to be part three, and we're going to go to Iowa, uh, which actually wrapped up in August. It was the 8th through the 18th. And uh, just so folks don't uh, happen to know, we have picked a couple of items from the list. This isn't everything that's there um, necessarily uh, in the midst of the foods. These are usually newer things. um, And some of this stuff we've seen before, so we might not necessarily talk about very specific things because it's kind of like a different version of the same old thing. Right. um, In that case. So that being said, shall we jump in with our first item? Let's do it. I'm hungry. <laughs> so, oh, no, um, forgot to the eat. Iowa smoked roll from Wetcha Smoke and Barbecue is a smoked pork tenderloin stuffed with jasmine rice, jalapeno creamed corn, smoked poblano queso, and giddy up Texas taco sauce, Pablo Ranch, and smoked sesame seeds. Wow. Can you rewind just a little bit? Texas taco sauce and what? <laughs> it says <laughs> giddy up Texas taco right. sauce. And? Poblano ranch. Okay. You said you didn't say poblano. What did I say? I don't poblano. remember. Poblano or something like that. <laughs> it was did, a very... did, I, did I white boy Pablo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway. Um, Pablo, no. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking at this um, thing. And I was having a moment because I was looking at Justin Pearson and I hadn't read anything. And I was like, are we doing some random ass sushi? Like, what is what is going on here? Right. And then I realized, oh, it's not a sushi thing. It's just a stuffed pork tenderloin. Okay, cool. But right. But it, but it, I think it's a play. Uh huh. On the concept of a sushi roll, right? Because because I agree. Like the presentation, it does look like a sushi roll at first. Like if you don't look real close, you're like, "There's no nori," but like, there's something going on here. Right. Um, I mean, I mean, and... they don't claim it to be sushi. They just say it's a roll. Right. Right. So it's not like they're trying to. And there's plenty of like, uh, more of like pastry pastries and and some other things that are considered rolls which are in kind of the same format except they're more of like the swirl and then sliced like this so yeah yeah 
They at least, so, if anything, they don't claim to be sushi or saying anything about being sushi. So, right. So I'm looking at this. I kind of like it. Um, I am trying to figure out why they spelled it the way they did. Why is the oak there? And is it because what the smoking uses oak? I, I or or what? I don't know. But that I think it's the smoked pork tenderloin. Right. So if I had to guess, the pork tenderloin has been smoked with oak wood. Right. But I agree, like like the name to the description doesn't quite match up. Like if they had said oak smoked pork tenderloin, then 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 I might have like Right, I might have got that right off the bat, but I agree yeah. with you because I was like, "What's with the oak being in quotations?" <laughs> yeah. But that being said, I would. Oh, I, I always forget our our um, ratings. I, but I will say, I will, I will, I will give this a try. This would be something I'd probably share with you. Yeah, I think it's I buy think it, try it, and skip it, or something like that. Ah, something like that. Right. So trying it, like like if someone else is buying it, you're willing to try it or possibly share, but you're not like, this is mine and all mine and you get none of it because this is my precious. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. I mean, I would I would probably definitely buy it. I also see myself like sharing it um, because it's intriguing enough. Although there is a part of me that just heavily thinks I have to eat it with chopsticks because of its presentation. Right. <laughs> I'm not good with chopsticks, so. Same. <laughs> All right. And this is this is good hand food. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it might be Before... a little messy, so you might need some napkins, but. Yeah. Right. What about you, Jeff? Um. I'm I'm a try buy, mm. where I'd okay. probably end up try it to see if I like it and buy it. I'm intrigued to buy it, but would like right. a sample. Yeah. So if I they're offering the samples, like I get a sample. Mm. I'm probably getting in a buy. Right. Yeah. Interesting. I think I would be. For me personally, I'd be a little concerned about the spice level, but mm-hmm. it's it doesn't look like it's going to be too bad. I live too long in Texas. So. Yeah, off of that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next so up. let's move on. Next up, and this one is kind of a given. Like I don't think there's any. Uh, it's going to be revolutionary. It's the bacon cheeseburger egg roll from Win and Sarah's Kitchen which is ground beef cooked with bacon and pickles with a cheese filling that has been wrapped in a golden pastry egg roll and drizzled with house-made burger sauce. This is... Why? Oh. (laughs) You're not going to say anything else? (laughs) (laughs) Jeff's like, this this is a given. This This is by... It's a bacon cheeseburger using, like, egg roll. Right. And for the bun. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I would skip this. Don't get me wrong. Bacon cheeseburger is kind of, it's usually my kind of go-to when I'm going to a place. I'm like a burger place or whatever. Um, I like the burger, and I like the smokiness of a bacon with the ground beef. This, um, eh, it, I, I'm not like super excited about it. Mm-hmm. I could see it and be like, okay, I'm good. Like, just walk past the restaurant if or the place if it was there. Yeah, I will say skip. Okay. So for me, this is a, am I in the mood if I'm going to buy it? I see nothing wrong with this. And just for 
clarity of sake so everybody knows, this was actually the People's Choice Best New Food winner for the Iowa State Fair. Really? Which kind of indicates to me the taste of the people that went to the fair. And this isn't meant to be judgmental, but it's approachable. Mm -hmm. It's portable. It's relatable. Like, yeah. So I think that's why it ended up besting the other ones, which the Iowa smoked roll we just talked about was one of the top three finalists. Okay. Sounds like anybody in Iowa. <laughs> so, um, mm. Yeah, like so for me it's like if I was hungry and I and like I wasn't looking for something else yeah. or um it's kind of hard to say like if I was at the fair like it depends on the mood and the atmosphere right, and right, that kind of right, stuff. Right. If there is there a long ass line cuz <laughs> like if it's 20 people deep I probably am not waiting for this cuz like I no offense I I could probably make it at home if I really wanted to. Right. Um and and yeah. Mm. And I wouldn't be surprised if this actually becomes a thing that you can buy later, like commercially. Right, right, right. Because there's already a uh, taco, like filled style egg rolls. Yeah. There's Reuben egg rolls. There's like Philly cheesesteak egg rolls. I've had that before. Right. So to me, this is just another sandwich iteration, only it's a, an egg roll deal. It's just you need the burger sauce. Right. To me, that would be what you dip instead of ranch. Although you could do ranch because, you know, Americans love their ranch. Right. Ranch is overrated. <laughs> Ditto. Anyway, it is a time and place. <laughs> so, uh, moving on. Oh, hold on. What? <laughs> I just realized something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where is it at? Um, on the dock, I have the wrong description. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it was the exact same description from the one above. I was like, what? Um, so this is Piggy in a Donut by Biscuit Bar. And it says, 2024 will have a new twist on the Iowa State Fair corn dog tradition. Piggy in a Donut is a specialty item of the Biscuit Bar, and it will be the new Iowa State Fair food on a stick that everyone will want to try. Man, look at marketing not. in this. <laughs> Fairgoers will enjoy indulging this sausage on a stick, which is dipped in mini batter, fried, rolled in sugar, and then ready to enjoy with syrup. Alternatively, you can try our delicious top secret sauce. Piggy in a Donut makes a great mobile breakfast, but this delicious treat is available from sunrise to sunset. So what if you the hell know is no different, mini batter? I know, right? Oh, you know it? Um, mini donut batter. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's in the little um, brochure. It says mini donut batter. They must have okay. skipped a bird. Where are you at? Mini, mini. There it is. You have to put it in there? There, I'm putting it in there now. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Oh. So okay. in essence, in essence, you take a Jimmy Dean sausage, shove a skewer up one end to the other, <laughs> dip it in batter, fry it, roll it in sugar, serve it with maple uh, syrup as dipping. Yeah, it's just a sweet corn dog. Right. That's that's really all it is. So I'm not a fan of corn dogs. Okay, so Jeff is Jeff is a skip. Uh. It, it, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm like, mm, not impressed. Moving on. Got it. Damon? Um, okay. So, I would, I'm try by. I'm in the middle here. Because as a kid, I fucking used to love the little pancake, like pancake, um, corn dog thing on a stick which was like a, it was a breakfast thing where you, yeah, you yeah, had yeah. a sausage and you had a pancake and it was it was a cor basically a corn dog a sweet corn dog and i love the fuck out of those uh -huh. um this is kind of the same thing i think it is the exact same yeah thing. it's just made it's not a pancake it's just yeah and that's sort of where i'm at i'm like i would i probably would buy it 
And it would also kind of depend on like when I see this. You know what? No, I'm just going to say straight up buy it. I would buy it. I would say like if I got at the fair like earlier in the morning and mm-hmm. I'm going to spend all day there, I would probably go to this. Right. Knowing that it was available and be like, I want to give this a shot. I want to try right. this. I am very curious about this secret sauce that they have. If it's, yeah. if it's just a fucking like blueberry or pink, or, you know, a strawberry like something, I'm, I'm, I'll be mad. But I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the story <laughs> is. Because the one little like syrup cup looks like flat up straight maple syrup. The other one right. though has little flecks and is a darker color. So I'm mm-hmm. not really sure what the story is there. Yeah, maybe it has some. Maybe it has like some pepper flakes or something. It's more spicy. Oh, like, interesting. Like I yeah, I wrong, don't know if they're trying to do a could, play on like, like a or a strawberry thing to its seeds or something. Yeah, I, like I'm kind of wondering. I agree with you, Jeff. If if they're trying to do a play on like Nashville hot chicken, that like savory hot sweet sensation kind of concept, but I don't know because they're not describing it, and that's the, that's the part that made me a little reluctant. Because when I read that, I was like, "Well, I get that it's a secret sauce, but you could at least label the damn thing, like, right? <laughs> to give us an idea." Um, so here's my thing. Like my my stomach, my gut says, of course you would like it. You have to buy it. But the wallet says, how much? And how big is this thing? Because this picture could be very deceiving. It is eight dollars. <laughs> right. According, so according um, to the uh, 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 brochure. Right. So Iowa actually made a whole brochure of their new foods and a map and everything. So hat tip to them, points to you, mama, like for actually seeing that us foodies <laughs> want this kind of a thing as opposed to right. just wandering around. And I'm glad that they listed the price, but still I'm like, how big is this sausage? Because like, do you only get one or is that right? Just for, 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 Putting it in the sexies. I don't right. know. That's the part where, like, my pocketbook is like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> like, if I only get one and it's as big as my finger, I'm gonna be pissed. I mean, it is a state fair, what? so all the food here is actually more expensive. I know I got fat fingers, but they're not that big. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Though I get what you mean. I just think it's hilarious. Like. I can just get one. <laughs> like, and it's this big, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> if I get two, I'll probably be okay. If I get three, I'll be very happy. Right. I am. <laughs> I uh. Anyway, I don't know. I'm on the fence. I don't hate. I. I yeah. I know I would get this. I would definitely try this. And looking at the map, it's like just around from oh wait no i'm wrong i'm looking at where's the entrance fuck me um i guess it depends on what gate you come in right oh lordy yeah did i find it it was number five wait where'd you go i don't know where five yeah if it's at gate yeah it's near gate 11 Oh, okay. In the top left, Grand corner. Grand Concourse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's near the food center. Yeah. So it's probably in a good place. So yeah. I just might. I would. Yeah. Yeah. That's easy. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> All right. Next up is the Tipsy Peach from Bubbly Bar and Bistro. It's luscious ripe peaches delicately sliced and placed atop a golden crispy sugar pearl waffle topped with lemon mascarpone and fresh thyme. So in Mm -hmm. essence, a waffle with fruit and cream. Now on the website, this is not the same it's the same item, but the description is slightly different. Mm. So let me uh, copy this and put it over to here. 
So they have two different descriptions on the website. The one says it's a punchy rosé sangria soaked peach coolie. Oh, there are definitely peaches. Yeah. Right. Or at least in the picture. Huh. If the peaches are on there, I would, I would definitely buy them. Yeah, I th- I mean I think the the picture is the is the real deal. Um I just think like the description is a bit flowery in one area or perhaps mm-hmm. more accurate than the other yeah. more straightforward. Like I'm I assuming... hate to say this, but if you don't know food, they're like it's like it's ripe peaches that are on a waffle. Like they just cut to the chase. They don't <laughs> they don't get all into yeah, the, like oh the, I think the brochure I think it's meant to be the like like quick and dirty like this is what it is, and here's a picture so you can kind of see what it is. Right. Um, the website is like, if you want more, like, descriptor and all of that. Because, again, there's a main, to me, there's a big difference between a, it's a peach. It's, a, it's just a peach, like, a, like just a slice of peach, to it's a ro- rosé sangria soaked peach coulis. Like, right. okay. Well, I, I, very... I, I believe it is a rosé sangria uh, peaches. It's just, right. well, they probably have the coulis, but they also have the peaches. Right. Yeah, I think the the alcohol part is interesting that it's listed in one area, like, but not on the brochure. So it makes me mm-hmm. wonder if you go there, like, with little kids, mm-hmm. are there options to get it yeah. like without Just the booze with and with the booze. Right. right. Well, this is Although a new one. I... So they might have have a peach. So it's a, a non tipsy peach. Could be. Right. So I I would try it. Yeah. There's some interesting flavors here that I might be up for, um, but I am I am generally not the biggest fan of just putting fruit on top of a waffle. Mm-hmm. Um, our pancakes, it's just it's not my thing. Um, yeah, that's just me. But there's enough like interesting flavor combinations here, and I'm like, hmm. I would give this a try. Jeff, you said you would buy? Mm-hmm. I would buy, I, I would let Damon try because I'm intrigued enough that I want to get it. Right. But I'm also like not fully committed on it. So I know myself that I'm not going to be all greedy about it and be like, like, this is mine and all mine <laughs> off the, off the get go. So, <laughs> so I'd be willing to at least, you know, share or have people it. try nice. it. Well, because there's a part of me that just wonders if it if like it's a little too sweet, right? Between the waffle and then like the mascarpone and the peach and the coolie, like is it is it going to be like a lot of sugar or not? It could be well balanced, and then you know. It well, it is matter. is a a lemon thyme mascarpone. Yeah. So there is a bit of sour in there. You do have a while well, it does have sugar. I still consider like waffles and pancakes more on the savory side of things. Because it's not like sweet, sweet, but you know, just mildly sweet. So the real sweet comes from the peach. We do have a little, some acid from uh, the rose, and then marsh capone will um, also kind of a little bit more things out. Yeah. Would be a bit more, bit, a bit of tank potentially. So, yeah, got the lemon I, time and then the Mars component itself. Right. <laughs> All right, and then to wrap up <laughs> Iowa, who wants to put some balls in their mouth? <laughs> so, these you are called talking to some gay men. What do you? What do you, I, what do you, what do you well, expect? that's why. That's why it was picked. It's called party balls. And it's from Junior's or JR's South Pork Ranch. Um, handmade shredded potato, cheese, and bacon balls. 
that are stuffed with AE party dip, which I have to go look up what that is, um, rolled in crunchy potato chips and then fried to a golden brown with the AE party dip drizzle on top. Oh, AE party dip apparently is a sour cream dip. AE dairy, very popular in Iowa. Huh. Stands for Anderson and Erickson. Or Anderson Erickson, like the dairy name. Got it. Huh. So if you live in Iowa, that's a big damn deal. It's kind of like in our region, um, Hell of a Good is uh, a big dip brand. Huh. So the party sour cream dip. Um who doesn't want a dip of garden fresh flavors? Our iconic party sour cream dip has been a favorite since the 1960s. Crisp barrel peppers, snappy parsley, and sweet onion combine into a melody of fresh veg- veggie goodness that breathes life into any party. Hmm. There you go. This hmm. would be a try for me because I'm not sure about the texture. Right. Because in what p- way? Like a potato chips fried? They're potato chips. It's kind of like right. the binder? Question mark? Yeah. Right. I would also try this. I'm not Probably not to buy it. it. I'm not, not sure if I yeah. would like it. it it's one of yeah. those... It, it's on the lower end of try... Really pretty mm-hmm. close to skip. Mm. Yeah. I would give this a try. I would give it a try. I would like, if one of you or Jim or somebody were to buy this, I would like try one. But it's also, because it sounds good, right. but it it's also doesn't. Because, right. because I'm a saucy person. I like sauce. I like the white stuff. <laughs> but it, it's like potato chips are they I'm guessing they're crumbled up yeah and then yeah. no they're not the binder it's a thing. I don't know it it's both this does so not seem good to me so basically and, and, and it's probably not a flavor thing it's probably going to be more about the texture right from the sounds of it they put a e party dip in the middle so i'm guessing they like freeze it and cube it or something and then they wrap the potato cheese bacon mix around it to make the ball then they roll the ball and crushed potato chips and then they fry it wait bacon or bacon <laughs> Yeah, it says bacon, right, in the description? It says bell pepper, parsley, and onion. Handmade shredded potato, cheese, and bacon balls stuffed with a E party dip. Okay, I'm looking at the website here and it doesn't say anything about bacon. These potato chip fried delights are crafted using the iconic A E party dip infused with the zesty trio of bell pepper, parsley, onion, transforming them into a delicious filling. Each bite is a fusion of textures, so uh, it doesn't say anything about bacon. Read the brochure. The brochure has <laughs> does have it. No, this says shredded potatoes. It doesn't say potato chips. Rolled and crunchy potato chips. Okay. There you go. It, yeah. uh, bad marketing. <laughs> it's typical. I Iowa. agree. There's some there's some conflicting like aspects to this. I will I will say this. I will probably buy it unless it is hella hot outside. Like if it is 85 to 90 and above, the last thing I think I want is a hot deep fried thing. Like I'm just probably not going to be in the mood. Um especially for like a whole serving of it. Shut up. Sorry, I'm just looking. I I hadn't looked at the website i was just looking at the brochure because that was me being anyway yeah 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 
cool. So, so some some you know kind of, I guess usual stuff. Um, and I say that because you know a bacon cheeseburger egg roll is not astronomically new. Um, deep frying protein after you've dipped it in batter, not necessarily like new or revolutionary. Mm-hmm. Um, I think these party balls are a twist on other things that we've seen. Mm-hmm. That you just you know basically make a concoction. It's like a stuffed tater tot. Yeah, in a way. I am a little more intrigued by the um, by the brochure description, but I don't like mm. that potato chip coating. All right. That's fair. Are we ready to travel to another state? Sure by the thing. way, I just want to, want to put this on record. I'm from Minnesota, so I always make jokes about Iowa. <laughs> Grew up that way. I apologize. <laughs> like rivalry between states or something. I don't know. Good to it's know. The only reason well, that Iowans are just fine. I just like making jokes now, about them. Now that you're an Ohioan, you can make jokes about Indiana and Kentucky. It's a because that does I've just only the been here for a couple months. So I don't think I'm qualified yet. In any case, let's go to the good state. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to go to the Minnesota state fair. That was August 22nd through September 1st. Um, this one had a whole lot of things. Um, these particular items are a bit different. Okay. So first up, we have Afro poppers from the Afro Deli. And it says they are bite-sized pastries infused with an African blend of spices, which are ground vanilla, cardamom, ginger, cloves, and nutmeg, deep fried and coated with a choice of coconut flakes, sugar, or served plain. They come topped with a choice of your drizzle, which could be mango chutney, caramel, or chocolate. Hmm. So in the picture, they have all three, like, yeah. side by side. Right. Like, as, like, you know, I guess options to consider in that case. But, yeah. So to me, I am, I'm, I'm probably going to try or buy this. I appreciate the options. I appreciate, like, oh, okay, so if I don't want coconut, which I don't want, I hate coconut. Um Agreed. Or Fair. I, or like, or, or if I, if I'm not feeling like I want a lot of sweetness, I could take them just plain, mm-hmm. or I can add the sugar, and that sounds cool. And then you have a couple of different choices. Um, mango chutney, I'm very confused about, but caramel chocolate, that makes sense. But I, I would, I would probably, yeah, I would try these. I would definitely try them. It's obviously you can't get them with all everything. Like you can't do all three things. Because that if, kind of defeats. If I ran the business, baby, you could have everything. I would just upcharge you. <laughs> I'd be like, True. oh, you want the chocolate and the caramel and the magno chutney and the sugar and the coconut? That's extra. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> dollar, 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 dollar. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'd yeah, be like, I would definitely. Thanks, yeah. money bags. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely give them a try. I don't know if I would buy these. I definitely would give these a try. I, I, I would do the same. Try without the yeah. coconut. I, I mean, would. I would probably buy. do variety and be like, like, what are the styles you have? Uh, I'll take the sugar, and, sugar and plain, but, and then I'll try each of the toppings. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, for me, I'm okay with coconut, like, and all of this seems perfectly fine to me, so I would probably do the coconut with the mango, mango chutney because I want to, I want the, the difference. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just having sweet hush puppies. <laughs> the, the middle one looks like it has both the mango and the chocolate. 
Yeah, yeah, like it's hard to tell because I'm like, if that's your caramel, it looks like your mango chutney. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing the caramel is not pictured. Pictured. Yeah. Because it yeah. looks like mango, and mango, and chocolate and chocolate. Yeah. Right. Which, so if the that's picture. the case, the middle one that's plain has two sauces. So yeah. And I maybe... wonder if that was. Maybe that was a choice. Like, oh, you want them playing? Well, you can add two sauces. Oh. Uh, that's fair. Which I would be Coke. kind of, I would kind of be all about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably, okay. you get, you can either coat them in uh, coconut flake and sugar uh, with a drizzle of, so maybe you get like two, a coating yeah. and a drizzle or two drizzles or, Maybe two coating. Yeah. Right. Can you coconut flake and sugar sugar coat? I don't know. Mm. Probably not as easy. Yeah, that one's probably a little difficult because if they have if they can't, does there there would be a potential cross contamination. Although you probably could just flake the like coconut, like just take some and just flake it in the anyway. Just anyway, I don't care because I'm not going to have the coconut anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. No, it's fair. All right. So next up is uh, new, new for me completely. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Grilled purple sticky rice from Union Mong Ch Kitchen. It says it's purple sticky rice grilled over an open flame until crunchy, then topped with choice of shredded Hmong beef jerky or pickled mushrooms. So you have like a meat version or a vegetarian. Garnished with fresh herbs and finished with Union Hmong's kitchen's crunchy chili aioli. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you here just to correct you. It's just Hmong. It's not. You don't pronounce the H at all. You don't pronounce the H. Great. Just showing how white I am. <laughs> I'm gonna own it. Like I don't know. That's why I said I've never seen or heard of it before. It's intriguing because it looks like the rice is like in a brick, like it's made, like it's cooked, and then it's like in a pan, and then they just cut it into like rectangles, and then they skewer it and they grill it. Uh huh. It and might that's be, when they do the toppings. It might be along the lines of uh, like how Rice Krispies are made. You know how our Rice Krispie treats are made. Where, mm. when not necessarily marshmallow being the binder, but because it is sticky rice. Right. Yeah. So I, uh, it might be something that you pack, you can pack together and then you just kind of like let it rest and all just kind of stay square. <laughs> Yeah, it becomes sliceable. Mm. Sounds good. Um, I would try. Gary, I would I would buy because I'm really intrigued there's nothing about this that turns me off um i'm actually gonna put in a link um on purple sticky rice uh to bon appetit they have a recipe for purple sticky rice from may of 2020 and they recognize this recipe comes from chef yang van or Ye vang at union mong kitchen in minneapolis like so the very vendor that's doing this is where this recipe for the purple rice uh which ah. is just basically one cup glutinous sweet rice three tablespoons black rice and cheesecloth that's it like so it's hmm. basically just rice there's nothing really else to it other than the type of rice is what you know gives it its flavoring and yeah, i probably want to try both the beef jerky and, and pickled mushroom i'd like to try both mm. Um, <laughs> this is for me, it's going back to texture and I'm just not sure 
how I'd feel about sticky rice. Mm -hmm. I don't That's hate fair. it. I would. I would skip it. I would skip it. I'm just okay. like, as much. I just. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'd probably just skip this. I, I had a feeling, Damon, this was this one you're going to be like, nope, just not my gig. Yeah. I don't get me wrong. It looks like the picture here looks intriguing. I'm just, it is not, yeah, it's not my bag. I'm good. I think I'll be fine. Right. All right. So let's take a left turn at Weirdville and go with the Patata Frida Focaccia Witch. Oh, no. That's not a mouthful from West End Creamery. So a patata frita kettle chip flavored ice cream created by the Minnesota Dairy Lab is sandwiched between focaccia bread from Rectangle Pizza and is topped with a blend of honey butter, kettle chips and herbs. So in essence, they made an ice cream sandwich. Like right, a little... literally, <laughs> right? So, so it's kettle chip flavored ice cream. So that's the first thing you have to think of. So this isn't like just plain vanilla ice cream. It is dairy cream ice cream that has kettle chips infused in, or like as a part of the cooking process. So it's got salty, like uh, fatty flavor that's been added to it. Right. So that's the first part if you can twist your brain around what your tongue's going to taste because a lot of people are probably not used to the concept of a savory ice cream. Mm -hmm. If you understand that. I mean, it's right. still probably right. like sweet because it's probably still has sugar in it to crystallize, but I'm saying like, you know. Yeah, that, so then that, they take yeah. that and they put it in the between the focaccia bread and then they use honey butter and kettle chips and herbs <laughs> to make this ice cream sandwich. <laughs> So this is a skip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I've been sitting here like listening to this. I read the the, the description and I'm listening to the description. And I'm kind of like I cannot wrap my brain around this. Um, it 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 it's going to be savory, but it's giving a sweet thing, but it's not a sweet thing. Possibly it is a savory ice cream in here. Yeah. So I'm good. I think I I think it's trying real hard to be everything. That's the thing. That's I think the issue because it's 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 okay. I'll put it like this. Instead of if it had, instead of ice cream if it had been like like a cheese like ball or something along those lines where the savoriness was definitely supposed to be there. Mm. I would be okay with it. I think for me, it is the patata frita that is I mean, screwing my brain I mean, up. They're 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 <laughs> using they're using bread. Also, that that's that that's pretty pretty on the savory <laughs> side of things. Yeah, it just doesn't. I've had sweet bread before, and if they had indicated, like again, like it, it, it's. I get focaccia bread. I've had focaccia bread. I've had honey butter. I've had keto chips. I've had herbs. I've had right, all of these right. things. But this combination, it, it's not it, it, yeah. it's not calling my name. <laughs> it's not. It's not. See, and that's like, what's I, funny to me, Damon, as you're describing that, because I'm like, oh my god. But what if we took this as an idea and we went in a different direction and what if we took slices of banana bread and we put a pecan like ice cream in between and then we drizzled it with like either caramel or chocolate and then put something crunchy on it i would yeah, skip maybe. that <laughs> well what do you think about this i would skip this <laughs> for a different reason <laughs> for a different reason. Okay. I don't like focaccia. Ah. Yeah, that's fair. It's it's a tough chewy bread. Like that's the one thing yeah. about it 
that I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this. Like this picture is nice, but it's a round scooped ball of ice cream that looks kind of hard. And mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, I would prefer that the ice cream was in a flat tray and you were cutting it into bricks to match the size of the bread. Right. Like, uh, so it's literally a sandwich yeah. as opposed to a ball of ice cream shoved between two pieces of bread. Cause that's really what this picture looks like. <laughs> um, I, yeah. Like, I, I would be in with the potato Frida. I would try that. Mm-hmm. And but I would, you know, it's if the it, focaccia, which is, yeah. which is, which is the no, big no, no. Yeah. Yeah. It, this is a, I will say this, this is a very Minnesotan, i mean i that like all right so for me this is a try i know if drew was with me we'd buy it like we it's so different like there's a part of you that's like i gotta understand this that's fair folks when you're dealing with state fair foods this is the type (laughs) of thing you need to do (laughs) Just say it, it, it's uh, I, and, and here's and, the thing I'm is trying. these places during their normal time, they don't have to carry this during their normal time. When it comes to the state fair, this is where you right. get weird with the food. Well, and that's so I hear you on that, Jeff. Like we've done this for a couple of years now, and sometimes this stuff is pretty basic. Like not basic yeah. white girl, but like, <laughs> you know, it's 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 like, oh, it's a cookie, it's a thing. Look, we deep fried it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing right. that exciting about it. This one, I'm like, I mean, I, like, here's my question. I'd ask the vendor, do I need to be high? Like, is that what makes this work better? <laughs> like, like, do I need to smoke, eat a gummy, come back later? Like, <laughs> is that what makes this work? Well, and the focaccia is better. Weird. I don't know. For, for this type of dish, the focaccia is kind of weird. Because yeah. you're doing, as you were saying, like an ice cream sandwich, but because the bread is so so tough, yeah. Because I'm especially top assuming tough. that you're trying to eat this like a sandwich, and all it's going to do is one, you're in the middle of August and or end of August, beginning of September. Yeah, it's Minnesota, but it's still quite warm, so that mm-hmm. that ice cream is going to melt. Right. Yeah, and it's probably going to be soft and gooey, versus this tough, chewy bread. It's, right, it's, and crunchy it's just going to like squeeze out, and then it's just going to be like a sauce for the bread. Yeah, and you're already saucing it with the herb butter and, or honey, honey butter, butter and kettle chips and herbs, and like <sighs> it, it's it's kind of bad but good. In the fact that this is very much a a a, a good state fair food, I have we have now talked me into this disgusting. <laughs> this, I would not say this is disgusting. Yeah, I just don't like focaccia. Like, I mean, well, all right. So to Jeff's point, this I, like it's totally valid, and I'm I'm on board with that. I'm trying to figure out how to like improve this. Not that y'all asked for it, but that's <laughs> that's kind of why we're talking about it. I feel like if they made it like again, if that ice cream wasn't in a ball, and it was flat, like a flat like like you know like a disc, yeah. like, you know, or yeah. a, a a block, whatever you want to call it, and you cut it, so you mm-hmm. cut the sandwich into strips, kind of like lady fingers or something, like. I think the form factor of delivery of like a person eating it would be a little bit easier because you only have to take like a bite of a strip and then like the rest of it. You know what I mean? And, and even right. then it's still questionable. Right. The, 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 I don't know what you would use, but not for kasha. <laughs> it, it, it's got to be offer... a different type of bread. Well, okay. So I... let me ask you this. What if it was a biscuit? That would make it better. Like a honey buttered, like biscuit. Classic. I could do know, without the kettle kind chips of biscuit. personally, but I get that they're trying to go with the kettle chip of the the kettle chip flavor of the ice cream into the kettle chip on the top. I get that. I feel I I would probably prefer in a biscuit. I would prefer a biscuit. I right, think that would be 
And the reason why I say that is to Jeff's point about the form, the delivery, the form factor. I just think the bread is like a questionable like thing. I think it's going to be too tough. But I'm like, well, if it was on a biscuit, and I, and this is coming from a person who doesn't really care for biscuits. Um, mm. I know that's going to be sacrilege because I love me some sausage gravy and biscuits. But I like light, flaky, fluffy biscuits, mm-hmm. not gravel cement pucks that are going to sit in my stomach and never like get processed <laughs> for a thousand years because I've had them. So like – if you're going to make some biscuits, make me some good goddamn biscuits. Like, yeah. um, but, I'm but like, so, with different gravy. That way it kind of softens them up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but I was like, yeah, if you did that and then you, you know, and you put the honey butter on top and you could still do the, you could still do the sprinkle the chips. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, biscuits would probably yeah. be, be the better one. Yeah. And, yeah. and would be just as if we were doing it in the UK, but um, but a Minnesota, a uh, American uh, misunderstood the instructions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Moving well, on. Yeah. Back to balls. This is the raging ball. Doing your damn ball for the herbivorous butcher. So this is a deep fried sesame mochi dough ball with vegan cheeseburger filling. So it says it's made with house-made vegan burger mix, <laughs> vegan cheddar cheese, grilled onions and pickles, topped with a bacon-flavored powdered sugar. It is gluten-friendly and vegan. See, see, this is trying to trick shit. Trying to trick people. Because I was all about it when it said deep-fried sesame mochi. I was like, oh, that sounds really good. And then you went to get the vegan cheeseburger. And yeah, I, no, I'm good. Skip this fucking shit. I'm, I'm not. I, I, <laughs> David's out. I want, I want my bit. I want my meat. Like I'm sorry. That's the. I mean, they do I, do oh, bacon flavored powdered sugar, so it's not really vegan. Well, it's just a flavoring. It's probably not real bacon. So, in other words, they put smoke oh. flavoring <laughs> in the yeah, in it's the powdered just sugar smoke flavoring. Probably. Yeah, it's liquid smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It again. Uh, See, no, just I no. Try it. I would try it. Like, there's a part of Y'all me that's like, try am it. I traveling with a with a with a vegan or a vegetarian? Because I would kind of be pushing them and be like, you know, you want it, you got to get it, <laughs> <laughs> just because I want to taste it. Like, Gary I and I will, will, will split it here or something like that. There you go. You two share it. Well, here's I'll the thing: is it? Is it served as one ball? Because in the picture, there literally is only one ball. It does say raging ball. Yeah. So it maybe it's like ball. a big honking ball or something like right. that? Right. So is it like the size of my fist? Or is it like, you know, a tennis ball, a racquetball, ping pong ball? It's a little ball. Mega is gobstopper it, the size, ball. Is the volume of a regular cheeseburger. <laughs> Just... Huh? That's fair. Form. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe that's yeah, what good. it is. I don't care how big it is. It ain't going near my mouth. <laughs> I kind of I kind of, I kind of <laughs> want to see the um, cross section. Cross section. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, Get I'm I ball out of my face. I no, I I totally agree, Jeff, because it's just the outside of the ball, and it's very it looks good, but you just don't know what's in it. Like you read you, the description, yeah, but. You do know what's in it. It's a pack of lies. <laughs> <laughs> David's all traumatized now. He's like, nope. <laughs> it, mm, anyway, it, it's right. a no. I'm good. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on to wrap up in Minnesota. Uh, the Wrangler Waffle Burger from Nordic Waffles. So this is a fresh all beef patty and signature Whataburger patty melt sauce. Layered with American cheese and served in a caramelized onion infused Nordic waffle. You you know one thing that I miss about Texas? What's that? The Whataburger patty melt sauce. Mm. Yeah? It's delicious. Well, and I could get it at my local HEB. I could get a bottle of it 
I would be like constantly getting that if it was available at the Kroger, but it's not. Actually, I should try okay. to check Jungle Gyms, but doubtful. Um, I was intrigued by this because of that, Jeff. I only know of Whataburger because of Texas. But this is the Minnesota State Fair. So I was thrown off by the concept that it was using the Whataburger sauce. But it's for the Minnesota State Fair. Hey, can I pause you again? Can you, can you roll back? What, what's the name of the restaurant? Whataburger? Okay, I swear you were saying what a burger. Instead of what a burger. <laughs> Well, I don't say it what a burger. I say what a burger. What? what? Anyways. I'm making fun of you with your pronunciations. Anyways, moving on. That's um, fine. Yeah, this is a bot. So done. <laughs> I in fact he'll take two. Like he like he says. Yes, <laughs> Actually, I, I wonder how big that thing is. It like, looks is it... sizable because it looks like it's two patties. Mm. It's old. In any case, it's old. I mean, in, in some sense, it's not really that innovative or anything. But yeah. it's got waffles. It's got burgers it's got american cheese it's got caramelized onions it's got yeah whataburgers patty melt sauce oh <laughs> win 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 Take it a whip. Wonder, Amazon. so i i did check there is not in any store in ohio there's nothing whataburger fuck whataburger in uh <laughs> At least not in the groceries. Because I was, there's, I just checked. My name is on it. Yeah. But for me, okay, this is, I would buy this. I think I would buy this. I know Jim would love this. It's a patty melt. It just, it sounds, but with the waffle, it, it just sounds fun. They got the creamy pepper too. <laughs> I would, I would love the taste of this. I would, I would, yeah, this would be a buy. Have the creamy pepper. Well, so apparently the creamy pepper is the patty melt sauce. Because on the label, I was looking it up online. The Whataburger signature sauce called one of a kind creamy pepper says made famous oh. on the patty melt. Because I swear that the bottle actually said patty melt. Well, that's the Maybe part that's that threw me off, mean, Jeff. Something. Because I was looking and I was like, oh. Should I spend 3815 and buy a four pack? <laughs> 3815. I'm on Amazon. I know. I know. Oh. I looked. I looked. Trust. I was like, practically everything's on Amazon. I'm like, Whataburger can't be passing up the, that free money to like sell their <laughs> ship, ship across the country. And they're not because if you go online, you can get a. Uh, where the hell is it here? I just saw it a moment ago. Go back, go back, go back. You can spend almost 60 bucks for a custom Whataburger Yeti Rambler Tumbler shipped directly from Whataburger. That's and it looks lovely. exactly like their styrofoam like soda cups. That's that's beautiful. That's amazing. Um so you were saying you would try it or buy it, Damon? Sorry. I would buy it. I think okay. I, I, I think Jim would like it. I think I would like it. I think both of us would enjoy it. We'd probably because it looks like it's a perfectly like cut down the middle and you can get mm -hmm. a good bit of everything. Yeah. I agree. I would, I would buy just from the description in the picture of mm -hmm. like, like it's a, I'm presuming it's a savory waffle since it's the caramelized onions. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Could like, still be a little sweet. I could be okay with, it. I would be okay if it was a little sweet. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, for sure. It's 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 a portable burger sandwich like deal. So what is there not to like about it? And now we've lost Jeff down the rabbit hole of Amazon because he's buying <laughs> burger sauce. 
but that's all the ones on this list, right? Yes. All right. For today. Anyways, I need to get on Amazon, so uh, that's the end. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Playwise, contact us, let us know your favorite foods amongst these. We've got links to the websites on our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email on CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 361 talk 361-265-8255. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud. The appropriate place is the URL. Join our entourage chat, bit.ly slash telegram dash col. Uh, follow our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col so you can see when we're planning to go to record these. The reason why I'm saying it that way. Uh, you can also get various good hormone at zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, some of those designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash you slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Please pop over to your favorite podcasting platform and like us, rate us, review us there. Um, more people will do that. Uh, more people will find the show. You can find me anywhere in the internet. It's box set, box puppy, box cub, box something or other. Damon. Right. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with me, you can find me as theatercub79 on, on most very related sites. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra. On Twitter, our pup number 79 on Blue Sky and Facebook. Um, for the non safer works, or that's not that's not safer work. For the safer work stuff, you can go to DMA Gamer 79 on TikTok or Twitter. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gary73. Uh, and sorry, I got distracted. Uh, no. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye-bye.